Yes, sir. Good. Will you come in, Mystery Challenger, and sign in, please? and sign in, please. All right. Virginia Catherine McMath was born in her mother's rented home at 100 Moore Street, Independence, Missouri, on July 16, 1911. She was the only child of William McMath, who was a Scottish electrical engineer, and his wife, Leela Owens. Her parents separated before she was born, and they were divorced soon after. And one of Roger's young cousins, Helen, had a hard time pronouncing Virginia. So she called her Ginger, and the nickname stuck. So when Ginger was nine years old, her mother remarried to John Logan Rogers. And Ginger took the surname Rogers, although she was never legally adopted. They lived in Fort Worth, Texas, where her entertainment career was born. At 15, she entered a Charleston contest and won, which allowed her to tour for six months with Eddie Foy. And when the tour got to New York City, she stayed. She got radio singing jobs and then made her Broadway debut in the musical Top Speed, which opened on Christmas Day, 1929. And two weeks later, she was chosen to star on Broadway in the Gershwin's Girl Crazy, which made stars of her and Ethel Merman. In 1930, she was signed by Paramount Pictures to a seven-year contract, but soon she got herself out of the Paramount contract and signed with RKO. And one of the provisions was that they hire her mother as an acting coach, which proved to be one of the greatest decisions RKO ever made. Leela Rogers was a force of nature, and even those with real talent needed all the help they could get. And in Ginger's case, it was one of the most ambitious stage mothers in the history of show business, the formidable Leela Rogers. Your mother obviously played a huge part in your career. Oh, of course. Can you tell us... I would never have been able to do anything had it not been for her, because I was, I started in business too young, and she, if I hadn't had her as my as my guide, I would never have been able to get to, uh, my toe on the, sh- uh, on the stage. Um, but uh, she, she was, they finally put her under contract to RKO and gave her a theater there too for the young players. And she was putting them in plays. They were doing wonderfully and the producers would come and see her, uh, talk to her about how does, how does this girl Lucille Ball do? That was a wonderful thing that Leela Rogers was doing, that Ginger's mother, uh, besides taking very good care of Ginger, uh, found time to help the younger people on the lot and invited us to a workshop that she was conducting. And uh, she was studying with um, several people, as a matter of fact. And she would go to her lessons and come and directly give what she had learned to us. And we were in her workshop on the lot three or four times a week. She was very valuable because she was more or less right about everything, which was hard for me to to swallow because mothers and daughters sometimes cross swords when it comes to making decisions. And so I crossed swords with her many times, but I adored her. And I, I knew that she was giving me the best she understood. But... Um, my staying with RKO, I, I really loved staying with that studio, and she was all for my staying with them. The lights are low. Here we go. Joanna Austerlitz gave birth to Fred Austerlitz on May 10, 1899, in Omaha, Nebraska. He was the second child, the firstborn being his sister Adele, who was three years older. Now, Joanna was another stage mother who dreamed of escaping Omaha by virtue of her children's talents. She planned a brother and sister act, which was common in vaudeville at the time. The family moved to New York City in 1905 to launch the show business career of the children where she changed their name to Astaire. And their first act was called 
juvenile artist presenting an electric musical toe dancing novelty. And Fred wore a top hat so he would look taller than his sister. And one of the critics called the Astaires the greatest child act in vaudeville. Now, during the 20s, Fred and Adele appeared on Broadway and were big hits on the London stage, but they split in 1932 when Adele married Lord Charles Arthur Francis Cavendish and became the Duchess of Devonshire. Astaire went to Hollywood and signed with RKO, even though the results of his first screen test read, can't act, can't sing, is balding, but can dance a little. <laughs> 